Hi guys, um, I've been doing a fair bit of weathering lately, um, making dios and stuff, and building stuff like this, um, and I usually use um, the salt technique, and I've been using these life color, these life color paints, <clears throat> and. Unfortunately, the, the Australia importer um, is no longer importing these into the country, so I've had to work out other techniques of doing um, similar to similar to the salt technique, but just um, to make things look rusty. Um, so I picked up these at the hobby shop um, a while ago. Um, they're just the MIG pigments. Um, I'm not sure what colours they are because the labels will come off them. Um, they were really cheap, they were like two bucks each or something, they're in a the bargain bin and I didn't know what they were um, and I just grabbed them because they were the rusty colours and I thought I could use them later. Um, I've also tried it with this weathering powder, it's just a Hambro one, I think any weathering powder will work. So what I've been doing is <clears throat> making this into paint. Um, like a flat paint so it still has the rusty look to it. Um, all I've been using is my trusty cheap hairspray. Hope you can see that. My camera's in a weird spot. There you go. Just cheap hairspray. Um, just from the supermarket. Um, <clears throat> now, hopefully you can see this angle. Um, so all you need, you need some weathering powders, um, hairspray, um, some sponge of any description. This is just some packing I've got on, I'm not sure what. Um, <clears throat> and some cups, I think I just showed you them. Um, and just whatever you're going to weather. I've got an, a um, ute back here, or a pickup back, and I've got a a rear guard off one and a bonnet um, I think this is of a uh, mercury maybe and I've just done like a bit of a salt technique with primer and a color just to give you an idea <clears throat> okay now um, all you do it's quite easy is get your hairspray I might move this camera actually first before we get going there. I'll just shuffle it around a bit here. I'll move this out the road so it doesn't get spray on it. Okay. So we get hairspray and we just spray it on the edge here. This is called decanning. Um, you can do this with spray paint if you want to put it through your air rush as well. So I'll just I'm not going to do heaps in there because it's splashing everywhere. So I'm going to do three colours. So what I'll do is I'll just tip some in there. You don't need a great deal if you're doing small areas because um, you kind of want it pretty a bit dry. So I'm only doing um, test changes how to do it. So. And then it's really easy to say it's like crazy. Right? I don't know why I haven't tried it before. Um, and you just get your weathering powder. Put a scoop on there. Dump it in. Just have a look in there. Probably two little dump edges in there. Maybe. Yeah, maybe it looks alright. I'll go a little bit more. Um, I'm just going to use the same stick, it doesn't matter. I'm just knocking around here. When I'm building models, I don't get crazy um, over all this sort of stuff, mixing colours and whatever. It just happens, however. Especially doing weathering, it doesn't matter. It's meant to be dodgy enough anyway. And we'll do one more colour here. I'm just doing three colours. Um, I've got a 
a dark um, light and a medium so we just mix like that and then I'll just cut this I'll just cut this stick into three just so we've got stirring sticks here we'll do a quick mix what it is is um the the hairspray is acting as um, like the binder in this and because hairspray goes dead flat um, which is why I use it all the time for fixative um, this goes back to its normal um, weathered powdered look once the, the hairspray dries so as you probably see the consistency is pretty good um, I leave as you can see bits of chunks in here um, I'll leave that in there as well just so it just um, so it looks like it's chunky rust on it and last one mix it in so what I've got here is um, the three I've used this one here might be a bit might be a bit bright that's why this Hambro one is good as well this Hambro is like a bit bit of a more rusty one. I'll just do a little bit of experimenting as I go. We'll chuck some of that in there too. So it's more of a dirty a dirt colour or Australian dirt colour anyway. That's what colour the outback in Australia is if you ever wanted to know. It's uh Hambro weathering powder. The this colour. Because I had some dirt from Outback Australia and it's almost the same colour. So there we go, we've got that mixed up. You can mix it as um as um like up as much as you want if you want to get a chunk. So you can probably squish them all out if you really wanted to, but I'm not going to bother. Um, so these sticks now, uh, I'll just leave them in there. Eh? We might need them. We might need them. Huh. Now, grab some tweezers, um, and I'll just move this out the road here. We'll put them in order so like that. I've got the first coat, second coat, third coat. And I'll just pinch a bit off here. It depends how big of um, sections you want to do with this. You can either... I'll show you this technique first, then there's another technique I will use as well. Um, so you just pinch off a bit of that. And what you want is... Um, we're not using the flat surface we're not using this flat surface here, we're using this rough edge here um, just to give us our spottiness so you just grab it like that, with the flat sides in there like that so you don't use them we'll turn that around a bit eh, so it's a bit dodgy you just try and find the dodgiest side it looks better that way um, I think we'll use this first eh so I've given this a bit of a it's just been painted. Well, I got this in parts box. Um, I don't know what paint it is. Um, so I'm going to just rust along the edge here and bits and pieces. So we just dip in like this with the first coat. Um, to put the base on, you just dip it like that and you just dab it on like that. This is super easy. You'll be you be smashing these out in no time once you work out how to do it so easy. So, I could probably, probably spend more time on this if I was doing it on a, on a good build or something. Just practice it on spare bits and pieces. So, as you can see, it already looks cool like that. Hopefully the old, my camera and your screen makes it look as good as it does here. Load her up again. You don't want heaps of of this on here. I just did one of these for my dio, one dio I just made, and it looks really cool. Um, I did full rust, and it looks great. I'll just get a bit more here. We'll just layer up a bit and show you what's going on. You just dab away where you want. Remember, don't go. Try to um, leave some of the original stuff there. 
because um, even if it's been sitting there for 20 years it'll probably still have some of the original paint on it somewhere you can just roll it around and use different sections of the, of the thing just dab it like that okay so that's that one and then we'll do the bonnet as well hey So this time on this one, um, I'm just going to do um, where the primer is. What I, well, the, the idea I wanted was um, the paints wore off where the grey is and it's worn back to the metal and the metal's started to rust and the original paint colors in there. So we'll just dab in like this. Just trying to get in the, into there if we can. Just be mindful that this hairspray um, it goes off pretty fast, so your powders are probably dry out. You can add more hairspray to it, it doesn't matter. So I'll just do this fairly quickly. Eh? I'm probably going to be picky this one because I might use it in a dio. I might just put it in the background somewhere. Get on here. Try to vary, like roll your sponge around because you don't want the same dab pattern over the whole lot. If you know what I mean, so it doesn't look like it's just been stamped on there. And we'll do some up here. Like that, maybe this corner. Um, the, good, the good thing about this stuff is you can go straight over paint and it just covers straight away. There's lots of other rust techniques um, that you can use after this. You can use this as a base. That'll do. So we'll get we'll throw that in a bin and get another bit. If you can see now, um, hopefully I'll get this to focus better. It's just an iPhone. Um, <clears throat> Hopefully you can see how flat that is. That's like just looks almost like straight um, weathering powder that's I've just stuck on there. So we may have to get some more. I'll just get some more hairspray here. Hang back just a sec. As I said, this dries really fast. Um, like that's dried out already. I'm not it's dried it too much for me to um, to use it. So I'll just put some hairspray in there and give it another stir. It's back to its original. But I mixed it. So which one is? I'll actually go this one next. I think it's a bit lighter. The idea with the colours is um some of it's um some rust sometimes goes darker as everyone knows. I think it's caused to the moisture in the in the rust that holds the moisture in and the dark ones um just to give it some shadow a bit of contrast so we're coming with this next i think you're kind of getting the idea here now and remember each time we do a color we just do less and less color on it i'm not sure if this technique's been actually people use this or not or it's something i've just discovered but it works really good. So if anyone has invented this before, that's cool because I'm using it. Sorry, I'm not going to steal your fame. Yeah. A lot of stuff I've been doing is I'm stealing it from here, there and everywhere. Um, a lot of the military guys use uh, all these cool techniques which is good because then us car guys can steal it off them and make rat rods and stuff out of it and rusty old cars <coughs> as you can see that's already dried um, hopefully as I said this paint's probably not the best light for it but um, 
looking chunky now and it's uh, looking a lot more like rust. So I'll just do this one as well. I'll just try and focus here what I'm doing. So we'll just have it on here a bit. Random. Remember all rust and stuff when, when it happens, it doesn't happen specific patterns, it just happens. So you have to think like rust. You have to think randomly. I'm going to draw it out a bit here. Again. A bit over here, eh? I haven't tried this with um, the usual chalks that I use. All of that will be my next step, I'd say. To see if you can use it with um, just chalk pastels from the art shop. There we go, there's that one done. I'm not real close, I don't know if I'm keen on this look yet, but it might end up all rusty. So, <clears throat> that's them two colours, and we have this last colour here. Hopefully this doesn't dry it out too much. And we'll get with the sponge you can use any sponge, you use kitchen sponge if you want. It doesn't really matter. You just want that sponginess and the rough edge. Now this one here, it's just like a shadow sort of so we just like do very minimal sort of stuff here. Just like that. So, I'll just do a quick bit on here. I'm just fixing stuff as I go that I don't like here. I'm getting a bit carried away just for you to show you guys, but anyway. Put a bit here, a bit more in the corner. Sometimes it's very bit darker in the corner where they've been someone's put them in the dirt and left them there if they've been sitting up right like that in the dirt against the fence or something that doesn't look too bad I guess, I guess. like that now that is pretty much pretty much done I'll try and get better light here. Hopefully you can see it. It actually looks um when you dab it and the dry powders mixed in, it actually looks it's got this rough texture like rust. Um, that's fully dry now, it's it even feels kind of like rust. Um, if you want to, you can get your trusty hairspray out and put a just a light coat over it. Um, you won't lose any of this. Uh, look here and it'll probably seal a little bit more than you can do other techniques over the top there's another technique I've been trying um, I was shown um, some videos of a tech guys technique was shared on our, our Facebook page um, and probably everyone's probably seen it where you chuck a rusty nail in a solution of um, um, peroxide and white vinegar and you make a rust solution and just dab it on I've tried that on another one and I went over this with some of that and it come up really well um, so you can leave it like this or you can do some sort of technique like that over the top but I'm pretty happy with that that's probably definitely going in a dio somewhere and this probably will as well maybe put some bullet holes in it or whatever so that's that way and now I'm just getting some more spray. spray here. I'm running out of hairspray. I might go and spend another two bucks or another tin. It's getting a bit rough. So 
just mix it up a bit there. Now this is where this is where this technique um, I found just sort of blew me away a bit. Um, was when I did this. I just um, wanted to paint a few parts with um, they weren't painted or anything. So I got I just got this and just painted it on. This would be cool if you want to do um, if you do like a rat rod body that's um, just completely rust. Um, you can do this because that's just one coat and it's covered completely. You don't have to do relentless hours of waiting for it to dry and layers and stuff. Um, that's it. <laughs> And I'll sit that there and I'll mix in some more spray into these ones while it's having a quick dry off. I just have to keep adding hairspray because it's just, it's it's about 30 degrees here today. Um, and this stuff's drying really fast. Which is good if you're a speed modder like I am. I like to build stuff really fast. So, that's nearly dry enough for me to show you some stuff. Now, all I've got is an old paintbrush. Um, and you see here, here it's um, when your old paintbrushes, they split. If you, when you buy them new, they're like, they always come like that. And you think it's Christmas every time you get a new one. And then after a few weeks, it ends up looking like this one. Well, mine do anyway. Um, yeah, so you keep them brushes and you just... I sometimes put it on the table like that and scrub it on the table. Not with paint under, of course. Um, just to mess it up a bit more. Um, just to give it this, to do it for these techniques. So I think that should be dry off now for me to show you the next little bit here. So we're into the middle colour again. This is if you don't do the the um, sponge technique and it's a bit more controlled and you just like dab just dab it on where you think where you want it remember just keep random like this up here this will probably end up on a rat rod I'd say this this back I've built a ton of pickups lately, so I'm not real keen to do another one just yet. Everything I do lately seems to be a pickup trip. Okay, so you can do as much or less as you want. Remember, sometimes the less is better. Um, so that's like that. It's kind of like a sponge technique, but um, it's a bit more controlled. It's good if you're doing... I'm just letting this dry a bit. I'm going to clean my brush a bit. It's good if you want to do it... I've used it in here on this buggy. Um, and at the front here a little bit, this technique. Um, just so it's a bit more controlled. Um, and I probably once I've finished the engine, I'll probably splatter do some up here. So it looks like it's um chunky rust where it's been rusted at the back. This is one I've built recently. Um, it's just on a chassis. I have one of these cars. I think it's the most ugliest car ever built. And I needed a I wanted to build up beach buggy sort of thing. So anyway, now so. That is almost dry now. I've showed you that buggy. So we just get the brown. Remember the brown's just still the shadow, the, the dark colour. And we just come in here and do some randoms. This is a shadow, so this is very minimal sort of stuff. Lower up again. So 
So I'd probably leave that like that for a while. Because it's a big area, it's harder to get to look um, spot on with the rust. As you can see here, um, it's getting oh, there's chunky. It's sort of starting to look like flaky rust. It's just all the chunks in this that I've picked up on my brush and slapped it on. Get me out of here as well. You can play with this all day, but I'll just leave it like that. Just it's just to show you how to do it. So that is a new technique that's really easy that you can put into your or well, say repertoire I guess <laughs> um, yeah and if you're in a it's really good if you're in a hurry as well um, and I've got heaps of these powders so I thought I'd try something something different and it actually gives it a nice texture as well um, it's nothing worse than having something look like it's rusty and just being flat um, cool hopefully this helps and I hope you check out some other technique ones I'm, I've been doing and I'm going to do a couple more now. Um, so check them out. See ya.